Egypt's uh, GDP. And uh, tourism was virtually shut down uh, during these, these 18 days. So it was, it, there was a lot of pressure uh, on the Egyptian government to, to, to find a way out. Uh, and so that, that was pressure on, uh, again, for, for Mubarak to leave because uh, without tourism, uh, there's a, a tremendous uh, loss to the economy. The other one is the Suez Canal. So uh, once the, the workers went on strike, uh, had that continued, that would have shut down the Suez Canal, uh, which is the, the other uh, uh, extra revenue stream uh, for the country and, and for the government. But workers in, in other uh, cities also went on strike. As I mentioned, in, in uh, Al Muhalla, in Alexandria, um, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they went on strike. And, and the other aspect is that, that the, these workers were, were going on strike because they saw a window of opportunity. Uh, that you have this, the, this political uprising, this awakening throughout the country. And they could use that to, to go out and strike. And, and strikes had been prohibited for 30 years. So it was an opportunity for them to act. And had the strike con con continued, their, de their demands for, for, for wages uh, and, and working conditions would have been transformed into political demands. And so the, the longer that, that this, uh, this uprising went on, the more that you would have of a, of a bonding of, of workers to the students and youth uh, to the soldiers. Mm -hmm. And this was a truly revolutionary situation that, that no government uh, could tolerate. And, and you know, it, this is, it still remains to be seen how this is going to play out. But this is why uh, we had the strikes on, on February 9th and February 10th. And then on February 11th, Mubarak was, was forced, forced out. He, he, he resigned, and, and that announcement, uh, his, his Vice President Omar Suleiman uh, made that announcement, and people in the square, in all the squares, broke out into, into an incredible uh, cheers and, and, and celebration that, that you know, their revolution had, had reached its, its first major milestone. Yes, but they are still protesting. I saw something on the news just yesterday that they are still out there protesting. They haven't stopped because they know that it's just mm -hmm. the beginning. Absolutely. It is just the beginning uh, because, after all, they've, they, they've said that, that we want uh, mo not only Mubarak out, but we want Omar Suleiman out, and he's gone. Uh, we want Ahmed, Ahmed Shakir, the, the, the prime minister, out. Uh, unfortunately, the, the prime minister and his cabinet are still there. Uh, although there have been changes in the cabinet, and these are just cosmetic, there's no fundamental change. So the people are out there in the streets because these fundamental changes remain ahead. Yes. They are not going to give up until there is a, is, is a really thorough uh, regime change. Yeah. Yes. As repressive as they have been, mm -hmm. they are very aware of who is in their government and who, what they've been responsible for, and mm -hmm. they want them out to really put in the changes. And they're willing to have everybody represented. That's, that, that's correct. And, and there, you know, there's, there's been some ambiguity uh, uh, among the protesters as to, as to uh, where the, the, the what is going to be the role of the military. Uh, the military has, has, has played its cards, I think, very, very uh, wisely uh, in deciding not to fire on the, on the protesters. The, the military did not fire a single shot. But I believe that it really couldn't afford to because with the bonding of the, of the soldiers and, and the people, um, had the military actually given the order to crack down on the protesters, the, the, the frontline soldiers would have refused to fire. They would have put down their arms. And the evidence of this is that, the, that many of them uh, act, actually joined with the protesters and some of the, the uh, intermediate level officers even uh, came out into the square and, say, and said that, that I support you, I'm with you. Uh, it's important to understand that the, the Egyptian army uh, has, has different layers. And the top layer, which is the generals, are, are the ones who are, who, who are at the top of the command structure. And of course, they want to have some kind of continuity with the old regime. 
Uh, after all, they are they are the ones who you know from from where the the old regime came. Uh, every president of Egypt has come from the military, and of course, uh, you know the, the the military has benefited from from these 1.3 billion dollars uh, every year of uh, of U.S. military aid. Uh, the generals are are also benefit because they uh, when they retire, they're they're given positions. Um, to head uh, various enterprises that are that are owned by the armed forces, and th this is uh, these enterprises range everything uh, anywhere from from munitions to food production. Uh, so so the the these generals uh, have a stake uh, as uh, uh, in, in controlling not only the military but also in controlling capital. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, the intermediate level officers are, are a bit different. And in fact, if we, uh, Egypt has a history of, 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 uh, of independence uh, from the intermediate level officers because the, the uh, revolt that overthrew King Farouk uh, in 1952, in fact, was by mid-level officers. Okay. Well, we have about three minutes left. and. Wanted to find out of um, in the many clips that we've seen, women played prominent roles in the uprising. Do you have any closing comments on the roles of the the women in the the uprising? Well, if we look at at the demonstrations, even though they were illegal in in past years, very few women would participate, and and that was simply because of of fear that they would get beaten up by the police. Uh, if they were arrested, they would have been dragged off to jail. They would have been tortured, just just like the men. So uh, there was a, a tremendous and understandable reluctance of, of women to join demonstrations. It doesn't mean they didn't, but they were they were few. Yes. And uh, this time we see many more women uh, coming out to demonstrate, and and not only that, but actually as we've seen, leading some of the rallies, leading some of the chants in the square. Yes. And uh, so, so this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, um, a, a very, uh, is, this is a new phenomenon. Um, it, as you know, uh, throughout the Middle East, uh, yeah. w women are, are usually uh, uh, play a secondary role, but I think that, that this is beginning to change. Yes. Well, people throughout the Middle East are rising up to overthrow their dictators. Tunisia, Libya, Yemen, Bahrain, and many others. We have a minute left. Any suggestions on websites, radio stations, alternative news sources that people can go to? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, of course, the, the, some of the best live coverage uh, of, the, uh, of what has been going on in the Middle East uh, and other parts of the world, for that matter, has been uh, uh, Al Jazeera. And uh, you can actually get it on the web. Um, at the, uh, the, the, uh, the URL that's shown, uh, english.aljazeera.net slash watch underscore now. And for the rest of the information, maybe people can check your, the San Jose Peace and Justice website, www.sanjosepeace.org? Yes. Well, um, Dr. Sharad Jilin has been our guest um, today. We're very grateful for him being here. He's giving presentations on his trip to Egypt around the Bay Area. So if you are interested to invite him to give a local presentation to your group or organization or church or whatever, please contact him at www.sanjosepeace.org. So Sharat, thank you so very much for being our guest today. It was awesome. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.